a lot of people are already familiar with prophecy. Paparazzi. Article 12 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights states, Your IP address shows where you live, down at the city, and uh, even what internet service provider you use and what operating system you're on. So that's all public knowledge and you have the right to protect it. There's other reasons why you should use a proxy when you surf. It's not just good for blocking your IP address, though it is a bonus. You can also block undesired sites or sites you think have malware, um, along with circumventing regional restrictions, like um, if you're not allowed to see specific videos because of what country you live in. So there's a lot of added benefits. Now, I really want to watch this Doctor Who video, but I've heard that it's blocked for people in the U.S. Yeah, see? So I'm going to access a proxy list. I want to appear that I'm from the UK, so I'm going to select the UK proxy server list. And you can do this no matter what country you're from, you just want to select the IP to uh, the country that you want to appear that you're from and copy it. Now I have the IP address I want, so I want to get Firefox to talk to the internet with that IP, so Tools, Options, and Advanced. Then we'll click on Network and Settings. And don't worry if you have another browser, you can use pretty much whatever, but you want to manually configure your proxy here. And you'll just paste whatever IP address applies to you. In my case, it's UK. So after I click OK, I am now, as far as the internet's concerned, from Great Britain. So let's go back to that blocked video and apply the changes by refreshing the window. All right. And with a new IP. Ta-da! This was a triumph. A common example of a proxy is an anonymizer. A lot of people are familiar with them. You go to the uh, like anonymous.com and you put in um, the site that you want to search anonymously and they in turn use their IP address instead of yours. Now there's some problems with that. It doesn't always work. It doesn't normally work with video. There's some dicey issues there with spyware and oftentimes they're not free and if they are they have lots of ads. So I think we can do better than that. So now you're at school or work and you're trying to access your favorite website but you're blocked from it. So we're going to use the poor man's proxy here by going to Google and hitting language tools. And we're going to translate the web page by putting the same URL in. Google doesn't know that it's already in English, so we translate it and there it should be for you. Beware, beware. Some organizations block by keyword or by whole site. So the poor man's proxy might not always work for you, but it's a great option when you're when you're not able to modify on the browser level and manually tweak the proxy. You can check out Google's cache, which accesses the website through a different IP address, so you should also be able to look at it that way. Using this caching method, you're basically seeing Google's most recent record of the site, so it may not be as updated as you want it to be. See, that wasn't so painful, was it? I mean, you learned all the way from a low-end proxy, like an anonymizer, to language tools and Google caching, and even manually setting your proxy. I mean, you have all the tools in your arsenal to protect your privacy and be the safest you can while surfing the net. So um, check out my website if you want to know a little bit more layman's terms on how to establish proxies. And I can't wait to see you next time.